Hi there. Now, in this video, we've got a question based around working with SIRD. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. And as usual, when you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So for this first one, we've got to write the root of 80 then in the form c root 5 where c is a positive constant. So for part a then all we need to do is just break the square root of 80 into a product of its factors preferably looking for values which are square numbers. And We get a clue here we see that we've got to have 5 as a factor. So I think of what do we multiply 5 with to get 80? Well, it's 16. So this is exactly the same as doing the square root of 16 times 5. And that means that we can apply the rule where this is exactly the same as doing the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 5, well, we don't really know that one. It's not an exact value. So we leave it as a third. OK, so we've got it in that form where C is a positive constant. If we're asked to state the value of C, the answer would have been 4. OK, so that's part A. Now move on to part B. And in part B, we're told that a rectangle R has a length of 1 plus root 5 centimetres and an area of root 80 centimetres squares. And we've got to calculate the width of R in centimetres, expressing the answer then in this format. So if that's the case, remember that the area of a rectangle is given by doing length times width. So that gives us the area of the rectangle. And if we're to find the width, then the width would be equal to the area divided by the length. And so that means that for this question, We've therefore got that the width, let's just put it down here, the width will be equal to the area, which we're told is root 80, square root of 80 then, and that is divided by the length, and the length we're given as 1 plus root 5. Now, in order to get this into this form here, we need to rationalise the denominator that is to get rid of this third in the denominator. And to do that, we times top and bottom of this fraction by the same value. So it's like timesing by one. And what we do when we've got two terms here in the denominator with a third in, we switch the sign. So we multiply top and bottom by one minus root five. As I say, if you're unsure about rationalizing, do check this out on my website, okay? So there we go, we've got that. Now we just need to work at expanding the brackets. But in the first part of the question, we saw that square root of 80 was exactly the same as 4 root 5. So that seems to suggest that we ought to change that to 4 root 5 at this stage. So just put that as 4 root 5. And we've got that over 1 plus root 5. There. I'll put that in brackets now that we're going to be multiplying top and bottom by 1 minus root 5. Okay, so all we need to do now then, as I say, is just expand the brackets. So let's just see what we get. I'll put down the width again, width equals. So we've got 4 root 5 times the 1 there, so that's going to be 4 root 5. And then we've got 4 root 5 times minus root 5. Well, root 5 times root 5 is 5. Some people might say it's the square root of 25. Same thing, though. It's going to be 5. 4 times 5 is 20. So we've got minus 20 there. And this is divided by what is often referred to as the difference of two squares in the denominator here. You get 1 times 1, which is the 1. And then you get... 1 times minus root 5, which is minus root 5, and then plus root 5 times 1, that's plus root 5, 
And then we've got root 5 times minus root 5. That's going to be minus the square root of 25, or just simply minus 5. So cleaning this up, we've got on the top 4 root 5 minus 20. And then in the denominator here, we've got 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. The root 5s cancel one another out. And then I can see that I could pull out 4 as a common factor across the top here. So we've got 4 multiplied with root 5, and then it'll be minus 5. And that's all divided by minus 4. And I can see then that the 4 and the minus 4, they cancel one another out. And that's going to leave us with a negative 1 there. And so what we've got then, if we were to expand this, because we've got no brackets around this, we've got minus 1 times, I'm going to go for the 5, the minus 5 first of all. So minus 1 times minus 5 gives us 5. And then minus 1 times root 5 is minus root 5. And you can see that this is in the form that we're asked for, p plus q root 5. And we've got to state what the values of p and q are. They're integers to be found. So we could say that where p is equal to the 5 and q is equal to minus 1. And there you go. Okay?